How you doing? Uh, we are building a chunk car, or champ car, whatever you want to call the thing. And part of that is we have to build our own roll cage, or we're going to build our own roll cage. Mostly because uh, never built a roll cage before, but my neck's in the car. I'm I kind of think I care more about my own well-being than some other random guy. So we're gonna build it to their specs. But to do it, we picked up this affordable bender, made in America, and all that good stuff. And it's, uh, it's an odd little duck, but uh, I, I just want to do a couple quality of life improvements to this to this piece just to to make it a little better. And I figured let's, let's document this and start documenting everything. There's definitely some odd things that they did and some choices, I guess, depending on uh, their capabilities and their shop and to keep it cheap. So like, there's some weirdo parts like the shackle with washers welded onto it to just make it a little thicker and shit. And it's, uh, it works. It's interesting, to say the least. But, uh, Pan over. Here's the ride right here. Let you guess to know what it is. We'll uh, reveal that later, maybe. But um, we're here right now. So here we have the uh, lack of the correct word, the bending shoe, or whatever they call this thing. It's the piece that actually has the two bend around it. And a couple things that were missing or a couple things I didn't like was this is their degree indicator and that's really not very good and it's not exactly expensive to get a little one of these digital guys, which I'm going to use this one. Right here. And I want to use this to see what my angle I'm throwing is going to be as we go. So a couple things, it's aluminum and it's a, a rough casting. This spot, especially up here, is a rough casting, but it is technically parallel with this. So wherever this goes, this spot, if I get this flat, is going to stay parallel. And flat is going to be an arbitrary word here. It's uh, flat enough. It's definitely a, a rough piece. Uh, it's precision it is not something huge here, but we're bending tubes. We're not sending someone to the moon or something. So we just straighten it up best we could. This is a very rough cast that they just ground up here. So I just want to take my, my face cutter and I want to cut it flat up here. Just so I have a flat spot. Then maybe I'll throw a couple magnets in there because again it's aluminum, not magnetic. Glue a couple magnets in so I can just put this on here. And then I can catch my angle as I'm rotating it with this instead of trying to use this degree wheel or some other kind of magic. And uh, yeah, so we're doing for right now. Let's reposition this camera. Now I have the thing pretty stable set up in there. It's pretty rigid. You know the blocking, just what I had laying around. And I got one wedge on there, just holding the other side down. Yeah, we're not doing anything with truly uh, a lot of precision here, but this whole particular piece I'm using here isn't the most precise. But enough to get the job done. Make sure we're framed up in there. And uh yeah. <laughs> spot there, not anywhere else. So
slow down a bit. We have about 20 thousandths. We want to be conscious of not cutting off too much of this, so we don't want to ever go below this area right here. Built up a tiny bit in the middle. Like this is just cosmetic at this point. Let's not put any extra stress though. This does not really gonna get stressed this way. So I don't see too much drama there. Up and down is gonna take a lot of load, not going out that way. But you know, we don't want to crack this thing, it's just cast aluminum. <laughs> Under the middle first. There we go. Stable, feels real solid still. There we go. We're taking like 70 thou off this thing, so a little bit over a sixteenth of an inch. And it's finally getting a little smoother. We'll do this and we'll come back to an actual finish pass that we're gonna care about. It's just the roughest material off of it still. Actually, this machine is not so bad for being a uh, China special from a long time ago. Shouldn't kick the camera. Sorry about that, guys. But I got a nice flat spot now to put this thing against, which is great. We're going to come in, take another, uh, let's take another 20, try to get most of this out. We're not going to get rid of all of this divot here, but let's just try to make it look a little nicer. It's not going to affect anything the way it is. We'll probably come back and do a little, a little ten thou finishing pass on it.
So we're gonna keep it relatively center, do one main pass down the center line, just because I want the little lines you're gonna see between them off of the sides, not where we're gonna stick our, our actual measuring unit. So let's just bring this down to a 10 foul. And we'll do a, a final pass, go a little slower. This machine doesn't have a whole lot of uh, adjustability or uh, torque. So, it's going to take so much. flat feeling feel tiny little ridge there but uh it's not so bad especially for this machine see all the whisper cuts because there's no chance this thing's trammed in still especially after all the uh the abuse this particular little mill gets it's not my uh one i care about so much let's just soften some of these edges a little bit And yeah, I'll we'll put a drill bit in here, size that up, and we'll start on that one part of it. But again, it's 
not exactly a, a super precision machine we're using here for the bending so this is roughly in place and where it needs to be that's a, a world of improvement of what it is you can only get so much out of this kind of machine especially when i'm using my uh a little harbor freight mill on this but it's uh it's enough to do what we need to do that's gonna work pretty well Point one, sure. So as long as we can put it there, we'll get a little magnet in here just so it'll stick on and stay on. So when we're jacking this thing and it's moving, the whole thing will be moving like this. And hopefully we'll be able to get our 90 degree bends and all that stuff going. And uh, yeah, let me set up the mill for a little drilling operation next and uh, hold on. Yeah, before we drill, we're just gonna hit it with some 400 grit. particular reason just uh knock down some of the higher spots that you're going to get with the, this semi crappy situation we got here. We're going Tormach style with a lot of these where I have a three quarter inch chuck, R8 chuck in the spindle here. Now let's use some of my Tormach tooling. Maybe you caught it to the right of us is my Tormach PCNC 1100. And uh, yeah, it's a little too much to use for something like this, but. That doesn't make it that much less, you know? I like using the tooling, having the convenience of the quick chuck tooling. Or the quick collet tooling, I should call it. Use that drill bit there. I'm gonna mark out just a center line on this real quick. And uh, yeah, screw it, we'll keep the camera rolling. Five is a little too much. Three five plus forty five. What am I doing? It's one point eight, so you're talking about point nine, a little bit less than point nine. Otherwise, I was having a brain fart there. I'm just going to scratch it with this just because we're an animal. Close enough. Center line scratched out. I don't know if we're going to put two or three of the uh, magnets in it yet. 
we'll figure that out as we go. Should have a better place to put this light. Uh, maybe right there. It's not in the camera's way. enough. Put the first one all the way out here. So my uh, little digital readout's a little fucked up. 78.779. So 78.78 we'll say. These uh, ball bearings I'm using, they're, they're basically magnetic ball bearings. They're a quarter inch. This is a little bit undersized, hopefully we can press it in pretty good. 7.78 minus 0.25 is uh, 5.3, 78.53. <laughs> First one would be there. Again, we're not really following a lot of rules here. It's not the way this, uh, as far as even intended to be used. So we'll keep with its uh, how it works. <laughs> So it's basically as soft as can be. <sighs> Hate stabbing myself with my tooling. It's magnetic, but it won't work in two directions. We'll make sure that, uh, yeah, it fits in there nice and easy. Comes out though, so we have to glue it in. Easy enough. I'll get a little super glue. We'll get them in there, and uh, that part of the project's gonna be done. We'll be able to throw one of these on here, leave it on there, let it ride up and down with it so we can. Uh, always have a, a decent digital gauge or a decent, very easy to read, easy to see angle measurements or for how much we crank the tubing over so far. Again, it's not in line with the actual axis, but it's parallel now with the axis or as parallel as this fucking thing gets with the axis. So it's going to be on a different plane, but it still rotates with it. Basically, it's still going to stay parallel the whole time. So it works out. That'd be pretty neat. So that's gonna be the first project done. Let me get some glue. We'll glue these in, and we can slip that back in there. I want to polish out the uh, a couple things, do a couple more things for your quality of life stuff that's a part, and uh, we'll keep going from there. All right. 
Here's a little of this JB Super Well Professional Grade C back label. Safety directions avoid contact with skin, wear safety gloves, avoid contact with eyes, wear eye protection. Got the goggles on, the uh, gloves, and yeah, we'll be okay. God hates a coward, right? So, we blew out the holes. They're fairly clean. I don't know. It's the only super glue I have up here. A couple dabs. That's some thick super glue. So, we will. In the interest of doing this right. Super glue's not coming out. A little glue now. So that one's in there. Let's get the other guy. the hands look at that I didn't read the warnings A perfect surface finish too everything's really now we'll be all right A little sandpaper Sits down in there. It says 400 grit paper, but I've been using this stuff for about half a year, so it's probably not that good at being 400 grit right now. So I'm smoothing that out pretty well. Some of the extra glue off everything. looking for but we got it let me see what's going on with my dogs so it's funny didn't realize it till right now this little cheapo gauge guess it has two magnets in it instead of one and I think the polarity is different on this one magnet here so I got one position here where it's on with the one magnet then this one is on there but they won't work together because I guess I used the wrong side when I put this magnet in place. But 
whatever. It works. Works there. Works like that. No exact reason to put it that way, but works like that too. I'm just going to clean up the surface a little more, and uh, this part's good. Alright guys, one other thing we're going to do for quality of life improvements to this thing. I don't know if it's going to actually make a difference, but this is the center pin. It goes in the big hole here. And that hole is drilled through a rough casting. It, it's not a great surface finish in there. And this isn't polished or anything, but I figured if I polish this, grease it up a little bit, there's not a whole lot of sticking that's gonna, gonna happen and that friction's probably not gonna do too much. But it's not gonna hurt me to do it, so let me do that. This is a, a wonderful piece of engineering here as I just welded a washer offset on the one side to keep it from going all the way in. But it works. Use that same shitty piece of 400 grit. Just That's remarkably smoother as is. Let me go get something that's a little finer grit. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna actually polish this, but that made it remarkably less tacky right there just with that 400 grit I used. Go get some more grits and we'll polish that a little bit more just with some sandpaper. We don't wanna really lose too much dimension here. Uh, we don't wanna put a bushing in there or anything like that, but a little bit of sanding is not gonna hurt. It's not a uh, precision fit the way it is, so we're not really doing too much to this the way it is, but. We will smooth it out a little bit more, grease it down, assemble the, the affordable bender again, and yeah, then that will be the next part of this, and hopefully we improved on uh, using it a little bit, make it a little more user friendly. All right, just a piece of 800. A wet dry thing but we're going in dry here Put the paper around. We'll try to use the other side to cut it too. Just trying to keep uh, even pressure and even distribution because you know it's the precision shaft we got going on here. It's all right. Let's more 
Definitely not time for it, but we're going to switch up to the 1500 grit. Because we can. Yeah, I could use, uh, if you really want this thing to shine, you'd have to go back down to 100 or 200 and start with that. Well, as long as you make the high spots shine, there's, there's something to be said about that. Make the high spots smooth, the low spots are just going to be there to uh, hold the grease in place. Same with the aluminum casting part. Just take care with your hands. See, I rolled my sleeves up on this. You don't want to get caught in a lathe doing some stupid like this. That would be uh, a shitty way to go out, honestly, or to lose a digit. Just be really careful with where you're putting yourself and your body and comparison to your tooling here because we're here to have some fun and to build a little race car but no one's supposed to get hurt there's there's no need for anyone to get hurt doing any of this stuff hmm. it's actually not so bad see all the little uh let's get really uh aggressive here and Use the 2000 grit going in dry. Again, it's not one of those, it's not really going to make much of a difference, but we had it apart anyway, so why not give it a shot, you know? We have two things to worry about here. We have this uh, eccentric washer on the one end, that beautiful device they put together there. Guess if we ever get real serious with this, I'm probably going to end up making a different shoe. It's called a shoe, now that I remember it right. And uh, we'll machine our own pin and everything, and you do an actual bushing. But uh, we'll see how this thing actually runs. We haven't bent any twos with it yet. We just took it apart and started fucking with it. Definitely smoother. Get the camera in there. Definitely shiny. It's got its, uh, like I said, all the low spots, all the pitting and stuff like that. That's just going to stay there. That's there on purpose for uh, grease collection, we'll say. But definitely made that a little bit nicer. See the uh, precision work at the end there that they had. But the part that's going to slip through. Sounds a little bit better in the hole. I wish I did it the first time. A little less friction in the hole there. And uh, we'll throw this back together, get a little grease on this, wipe it off first, get a little grease on it, and we'll slip everything back together. Uh, so, cleaned off the shaft a little bit, and uh, I was looking for my grease. Couldn't find my grease bottle, which kind of sucks. Uh, have a big tub of whey oil, but that's buried way back over there in the corner. So I'm out of whey oil in my little can, basically. So because this is super hard to get in and out, 
We're just going to use some uh, gear oil or transmission fluid. It should work pretty well considering it had no fluid at all on it previously. And uh, we'll put this guy together a little bit. The uh, shackle. Real nice fit, real uh, perfect bolt sizing. We'll see how tight we got to make this thing when we actually start uh, going at that. But next, we will bring you out. Careful when you do that. One washer on both sides. This is the hardest thing to actually take off. It is a semi tight fit there. Bring that center of gravity in there a little bit. Washer. I don't know what the torque specs are on it, but uh, we'll make it so it can still spin freely there. May the guys get me the torque specs on this. I'm sure it was designed that way. Just get a tiny bit of transmission fluid. half polish shift when I get some more grease we'll go through the huge operation of uh, come on. removing that See how big of a deal that was, right? And just back together. A real simple bender. Really, actually do like what they're going with here. Nice and smooth. This was actually rotating with it the first time that I had this thing just cranking. So I think that is actually a, a decent improvement. Again, not exactly sure what it's doing for us, but you know, this non-bearing, this non-bushing surface here with the steel was smoother than the center of that was to the rough casting or the drilled out casting on that thing, on the shoe. I wish the jack would just retract. That would be actually a, a good feature. So I'll, I'll do more on that next, uh, thinking replace the jack with one of the uh, Harbor Freight models that you can use the air pump to pump it up and down. That might be really cool to, to aid in this thing. But yeah, the real beauty here. Let's bring that all the way up. Tilt that off a little bit for you. See if I can get you guys seeing the screen better. Just 
the real mission with this. It's a lot of stroking. Full strokes. Freehand this right now. Apologize, guys. So it went past ninety by uh 3.1 degrees Yeah, that return is not so easy. Not easy to do one handed. Ah. Yeah, so I'll have to look into making this thing auto retract. I have an angle up here. We'll see what uh, it's doing. But yeah, that's our affordable bender. Our new angle gauge placement for it so we can see what angle we're bending uh, you gotta over bend all your tubes to get the angle you want and you know that's within a degree I'll say it's accurate I know it says point degrees there but I'm sure I can trust that relatively within a, a degree so if I have to bend it 92 or 93 degrees to make it 90 after the spring back that would be pretty good it's gonna make us a lot more accurate than what we would be doing with this uh, beautiful dial indicator they put on these things but Again, it's meant to be affordable, it's meant to be cheap, and hopefully with that little addition, we can improve the quality of what we're doing with it. In order to make it usable, because realistically, you're gonna be thinking about your center line here, to here, so wherever this gauge actually goes, you're not really gonna see it. Anyway, so it's not a, uh, not ideal, but I guess it's nice to have and nice they put it in the casting for you there. I would definitely darken these up or darken that up if you could. Alright, that's it for the first video with the bender. we put some things together. Maybe we'll modify this or we'll actually go get some tubing and actually use the thing. Uh, that's it for now.